Good morning. The reason it's dark and gloomy and you can barely see me is that it's bloody early in the morning. But well, there's a good reason for that. Today I'm off to Cranfield University to drive and experience one of the world's most advanced Formula One simulators. Got a feeling today's going to be a good day. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hi. Hey, it is, isn't it? Nice to meet <laughs> How are you. Doing? Uh, what a fascinating place. There's all sorts going on here, isn't yeah. it? Well, it's the only university with its own live airport. So oh, is that right? Yeah. In fact, that road as well that you can just walk down. This is going to become an autonomous uh, road. Is so it really? For test, testing yeah, autonomous so vehicles? The... Just over the road here, so when you turned uh, right in here, there's a little uh, business there called uh, Cranfield Impact Centre, I think it is. And it's where all the Formula One cars come to get their Crash. tested to, to sh demonstrate that the design is strong enough. And I think that's it all. I think it's about 70 or 80% of them will end up. I, I have actually been here. Oh, have you? When I was at McLaren, I came right. here with one of the cars to do that, mm -hmm. crash testing nose cones or something. So the product developed from the fact that if you're a military fast jet pilot, you do a lot of long duration, high G maneuvers. And what it does is, it effectively confuses the brain into feeling a G force. So, just had a little explainer of the, uh, of the company and the technology. Now we're gonna go and use it. Funny, I spent years holding those belts for other people. Oh yeah. Out of these things. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much easier to, for someone else to put them on for you, isn't it? Yeah, right. It looks really easy, but it's so awkward. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a go of Silverstone, I think the national circuit to start with. Um, and the simulator set up as, a, as an F4 car, um, which you might think is probably, you know, is quite slow if you're comparing it to Formula 1. When you're not a racing driver, though, it's probably still a bit much to handle. Let's give it a try. One of the first things that strikes you about being inside a cockpit of any single-seater racing car is the fact that you can't see very much. You can just see just along the top of the chassis and above the top of your steering wheel. Okay, so clunk into first gear. And here we go. Right, we're onto the circuit. Here we go. Daft was putting my camera right in the field of vision. <laughs> it's not a circuit that I'm actually particularly used to. There you go, there's the first excuse. Oh, here we go, I'm off, I'm off. Oh dear, there we go. I've just made a load of work for the mechanics there. I can feel the seat squeezing my, my hips, even my thighs, as well as the sides of my rib cage. Just to give me that impression of G-force, and it's totally confusing. I believe it. My body, my brain believes that we are tearing round a corner very quickly. This is exactly what this thing is intended to do. <laughs> Still haven't got that corner right. Pushing me forward, the seat's moving in all different axes, going up and down, so my field of vision changes slightly as if my body is being thrown, oh, as if my body's been submarining and pushing forward under braking, it moves back under acceleration. So, just by the tiny amount, my field of vision changes, confusing my mind into thinking that. We are actually going incredibly quickly around this racetrack. Oops, wrong gear. <laughs> That's not the fastest way around the corner, but it's fun. Brilliant, I mean, clearly I'm not a racing driver, but just the, even already, 
the feeling of the uh, of the seat pushing you side to side is so much more immersive than what I've experienced before. So I've moved the camera from the front, uh, so that's one excuse I can't use anymore. Right, here we go. <laughs> so, a Formula 4 car that was, which uh, in theory, relatively easy to drive. We're now going for the full works, Formula 1 car. Alright, here we go. Formula 1 car on the Silverstone National Circuit. different in a Formula 1 car. The level of downforce is just incredible, the braking is incredible, the acceleration is obviously insane, and the feeling you get inside this seat is just night and day difference. Wow, <laughs> that was amazing. Um, I'm actually sweating, I'm knackered. So immersive as an experience. Um, it just takes it all out of you. It puts you pretty much as close as I think you're going to get uh, into the seat of a Formula One car. I don't know how many laps I did there. I obviously did them all terribly. Um, <laughs> I come out of breath. But the feeling of the way that these these cues that cue your brain into thinking that you uh, have got some g-forces acting upon you when really I'm sat in a relatively stationary um, stationary chassis here completely confuse your mind into thinking this is what you're doing and, and therefore you forget you're in a simulator and you can focus solely on the, on the driving of the car I'm gonna go and have a look at the data now and uh, just see just how badly I did but then have a look at it and see where the main areas that I can improve it's, it's a bit like uh, going through a rouge nowadays in Formula 1, they do a downshift. Yeah, sometimes. just to scrub a bit of speed up. E even if they stay flat. Then we, we can see the opposite here, which is the final hairpin. What we see in the steering angle is that going at exactly the same speed, which is the mid-corner speed, Yeah. Uh, you have a lot less steering angle than he does. And the Gs are the same, so the car is turning the same, but he's using a lot more slip angle of the tyre. Oh, uh, okay. As you come on the gas, so you, here in the throttle, we can see you come on the gas and come yeah. off again because yeah. you see that you're going straight. Yeah. So you come off a little bit yeah. and you have a slightly higher steering angle than he does. Yeah, well, he okay. has less steering angle and he can get on the gas and do a more okay. gradual because it's pointed the right way. Yeah. So he's just going out. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, those, that gives me a few things to work on. Um, any other major points other than the fact that I'm not a racing driver? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's braking. Yeah, okay. So braking, this is going into uh, maggots and beckets, and yeah. then back on the hanger straight. No, that's not the hanger straight, that's uh, national straight. Yeah, national yeah. Straight. Um, he's very sure in what the brakes can do and what the car can do. Yeah. So he goes on the brakes, 
gets to 100% braking and then bleeds off it as he goes in the corner. What you're doing is you're giving brake inputs because you're not certain when you want to go in yeah. and which apex you're aiming for. So you give a brake input, turn it in, give another brake input, try and turn it again. And this is every time you're braking, you're losing distance and you're losing speed. The braking is one of the most impressive things on a Formula One car, isn't it? Yeah, the brakes are one of the hardest things to get your head around. Also, um, modulation with the hard pedal. Yeah, okay. Because if, if the pedals are a bit softer, you have more run, you can position your leg where you want it. When, it's, when you're putting a lot of force into it, you, it's harder to give the exact input that you want to give, which is why the strongest point of a driver is probably his yeah, left leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's what gives you the sensibility. And that's something that drivers have different feels for, isn't it? They have different preference for. I mean, I've worked with drivers, Kimi Raikkonen, for example, who, you know, the only thing he really cared about in his car was having, well, he, had, he wanted a strong front end on the car, no, no understeer, but he also wanted the, the brake pedal to be as solid as it could possibly be. Yeah. Uh, whereas others are quite happy to have a little bit of give in it before you get to that point where he just wanted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a thing of preference. Part of this is also the difference between drivers in different cars. Because when Kimi was teammates with Alonso, they built a car around Alonso in yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. And uh, it was undrivable for Kimi. That's Again, right. part of it was the front end. If you see when Alonso turns in, he's very aggressive on the steering. Yeah. Because he wants a slightly looser car in the front. Well, Kimi's the opposite. Kimi likes to be gradual and wants to, the car to do everything he tells it to yeah, do. Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's, it, it's the balance of uh, which driver you hire first. Yeah, okay. Well, that's really interesting. Um, lots for me to take in. Um, I'm sure when I get back in it now, I'm going to go and forget most of it. <laughs> but I'm going to go and try and remember those things. I think the biggest thing, like you say, braking and having the confidence that when you, when you approach a corner, the car's going to do not what your brain thinks it's going to do, do, but what, you know, what you've yeah. just told me it's going to do. And corner exit. Use all the road you have. Okay. You use these curbs. There's no stewards there telling you to <laughs> track limits, track limits. Good point, good point. All right, all right, let's give it another go. Go and give it a try then. See what I've learnt. The thing that makes this unique and so advanced are these continuous G-force cues that the car gives you. And a large part of that comes from the seat. Um, as I said, it's, it's, it's on actuators itself, so it moves up and down. Um, but the, the really interesting thing, and the thing that gives you the biggest sense of, of this continuous g-force for me are these inflatable pads so the, the seat belts themselves have inflatable bags on the underside that will inflate quite aggressively at times when you're braking heavily for example in the formula one car they inflate to put pressure on your shoulders as if you're being forced forward uh, in the car just like you would be in the real thing but what you can't really see here is inside the seat all the way through here down here right down here into the legs as well there are also inflatable pads under there, and they do the same thing. So when you're going round a long, fast corner, sustaining that G-force that you do in the real car, under normal circumstances, in a normal simulator, that's something that you just can't replicate. But in this, it really gives you the feeling of having the pressure on the side of your body that you would do going through Cops Corner, for example, at Silverstone. Let's have another go. Here we go, then. Got to get used to letting the car drift out much further on the exit. Smoother application of the steering wheel, and perhaps a later application of the brakes. Your natural instinct is to brake much earlier than the car can actually cope with. And of course, in a Formula One car, the faster you go into these things, the more downforce it has, and the more grip you've essentially got. Right, here we go. Oops, I'm in the wrong gear already, that's a bad start. <laughs> okay, another warm up lap. <laughs> Amazing how you get out of these out of the zone so quickly having got out of the car. This is why I'll never make a racing driver. Can't afford to do this in real life. But then I guess that's why simulators are so invaluable. is one of the areas where I'm really losing a lot of time because I haven't got confidence that the car is going to do what I want it to do and of course it will it's a Formula 1 car I'll tell you what else is difficult talking and concentrating at the same time I'm a man, I can't do two things at once
might have to be some very clever editing when it comes to the final lap. <laughs> That is so much fun. So much fun. Wow, that is just such an incredible experience. And I've been in the McLaren Formula One simulator. And I've got to say, whether it's better, I mean, yes, it's better. It's a better experience because you don't feel like you're in a, in a simulator. Give, you know, granted, I was in the McLaren one a few years ago. It may well have moved on that I, you know, in areas that I don't know about by now. But in that one, in the McLaren simulator, you always felt like the, the movement of the cockpit was always coming up against a stop. So you, you felt, you knew it was fake, you knew it was simulated. In this, because of the, the G-force cues that you're getting from the belts and the seat around your rib cage, your shoulders, uh, even the top of your thighs and your hips, convinces your mind that you are moving constantly, sustaining that G-force through a long, fast corner. And that is what the simulator at McLaren, when I drove it a few years ago, was missing. It feels like the closest I will ever get to driving a Formula One car, uh, even though I, and it's fairly obvious I'm never going to be a racing driver. I honestly, I could stay in this all day. Well, I couldn't because I'm knackered, <laughs> but I'd love to. As you can probably see, I'm sweating. It's hot in there and it's hard work. It's physical. My arms are actually aching. My shoulders are aching because the power steering or feedback into the steering is, is also realistic. And you're going through in a Formula One car, going through some of those corners so fast, there's so much downforce uh, on the car that the levels of grip are just astronomical and under braking as well, throwing you forward or at least it simulates throwing you forward in that seat. Totally believable. I mean I feel like I've just driven a Formula 1 car. Obviously badly, but that's what I feel like. So let's have another look at the data. How did I do second time round? So you've managed to shave off about a tenth and a half. Is that all? <laughs> you did improve on, on some of the things we spoke about. So for, for example, the steering input a little bit better. Yeah. Here, which is nice to see. The braking is much more firm. Yeah. And you don't have the on off, on off, on off. Yeah, I was focusing on that. I was, I was trying to focus much more as well on the, um, the first corner cops. Uh, and trying to, and it, and I know I didn't do it for a long, long time. I think towards the end there, I did manage to start letting the car drift out wide, um, but it, it just goes against all your instincts, which is the thing. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of it is patience yeah. to when to give the gas. The trouble with me is I haven't got a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can see how valuable these things are, you know, not just to a Formula One team, but to all types of motorsport. If you're an upcoming driver this can give you such an advantage over someone who's just getting into an actual racing car for the first time. I've never been in a Formula One car, but you know, talking to the guys who have, talking to the Formula One drivers and, and Formula E drivers and asking them how these simulators compare to the real thing, they're pretty close these days. And uh, the value added, apart from the driver himself, is in modern motorsport where practice sessions are quite short and yeah. you wanna do a lot of things. If you've practiced it before, you get in and your first five laps are already useful laps towards yeah. developing your car. Yeah. And of course for the team, the team can, can use these as well, can't they? To, to simulate changing items on the car, set up items and, and see what it will do without having to, to run continuous laps. So the value of these things is huge. I can, I can absolutely see that huge potential. And uh, thank you very much for everybody, all of you. Thank you for letting me have a go because it's been an absolutely incredible experience. Um, I'll stick to the day job. <laughs> but thanks very much. <laughs> I've got to say a huge thank you to Cranfield Aerospace Solutions for giving me the chance to try that out today. The hardware, or the technology rather, is incredible, both in the hardware, i.e. The, the, the thing you sit in, the car, and all the uh, actuators and the airbags, everything we saw and used today, amazing. But equally impressive are the algorithms in the software that runs the whole thing. So accurate that they can trick your brain into thinking that you are driving a Formula One car. They've sold this technology now into two leading Formula One teams. They're using it right now. And you know what? You want one in your own home? You can have one. £25,000 it all starts at. Right, thank you very much for watching again. Uh, don't forget to like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Share it around. And I will see you next time. <laughs>